Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will ask that you further instructions, and at the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering chant is 476 in the CBW. Kindly stand. <coughs> Son, of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit uh, be with you all. Uh, morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Teresa of Jesus, or St. Teresa of Avila. As we know, she was from Avila in Spain, died in 1582, and she was named the doctor of the church, the first woman doctor of our church, a mystic, a reformer of the Carmelite order. Uh, she and St. John of the Cross established during the Protestant Reformation uh, a, a more stricter rule for the Carmelites. In fact, her own order kind of kicked her out, so she formed her own group called the Discalcels or Reformed Carmelites. And two of her great works that she wrote were The Way of Perfection and The Interior Castle or The Interior Life. So we pray through her intercession today. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be compassionate and merciful to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection, grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Before the foundation of the world, God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless before him in love. God destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of God's will, that is, for the praise of his glorious grace that God freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as the plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, Lord, today we have seen your glory.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to a lawyer who was at table with him, Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors, for they kill them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, we will be charged against this, against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, yet you do, did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. When Jesus went outside, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile toward him and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. morning we began reading from the letter to St. Paul to the people of Ephesus, the Ephesians, and we'll be reading from it weekdays for the next couple of weeks. We heard the beginning of the letter this morning, a beautiful letter. It's a wonderful prayer of praise to God for all the ways that God has blessed us in Christ. It speaks of the richness of the grace which God has showered on us through the coming of Christ. And what does this richness of God's grace consist in? According to the reading, it includes our being adopted as sons and daughters of God, sharing in Christ's relationship with God, the forgiveness of our sins, and God's ultimate plan to bring everything together under Christ as head. So there's much to think about in that reading. And in the Gospel today, Jesus continues to be very critical of the religious leaders who were supposedly experts, the the lawyers, the, the people of the law, the theologians of the day, who claimed to know God's will and God's ways and told everybody else how to do it. But Jesus says they have taken away the key of knowledge. They refuse to respond to God's wonderful gift to humanity through his Son, and they also made it very difficult for others to respond to that. As theologians, they should have recognized God acting in the person of Jesus. However, not only have they failed to recognize God in Jesus, they have prevented others from doing that too. The religious, their religious knowledge was an obstacle to God's work in their own lives and the lives of others. So whatever knowledge we have in whatever area, including the area of religion, it has to serve our relationship with God and other people's relationship with God. Our calling, in contrast, is to value the treasure of the gospel, the pearl of great price, and to lead others to appreciate its worth as well. Our search for knowledge is ultimately a search for God, and needs to be at the service of that greater search. So 
Please stand our prayers of intercession today. We pray today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Peter, and all those who lead and guide our church. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray today for all displaced families and refugees on their journeys to safety and citizenship in other countries. We pray to the Lord. We all pray for all those who still are impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, those who are ill because of that disease, as well as those affected financially and in other ways from this pandemic. We pray for them. We pray to the Lord. We've been asked to pray for a young man named Jordan Natterer. As you know, he's been missing after hiking in British Columbia, and uh, his relatives are here in this province. So we pray for a successful end to that search. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick recommended to our prayers, especially Jim Foley, one of our parishioners who will undergo surgery today, and Petrina Miller. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, we pray for Jane Blackstock. We pray for Elizabeth Bernard and Edward Fitzgerald. For those who have died, all of our loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers and the quiet of your hearts today, your own intention at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May our offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa of Avila was pleasing in such great measure, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Joseph, our spouse, with the Apostles, death of the Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, St. Teresa of Avila, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace of Christ now with one another. See you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the my will. Let me say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ.
Grant, O Lord, our God, that your obedient family, whom you have fed with the bread of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa of Avila and rejoice to sing of your mercies for all eternity through Christ our Lord. And prayer to Mary for help in, in the, during the pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are sure you will provide, so that is in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace. Glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a great day. Our mission in him is 563 in the CBW. <clears throat> Shall be raised. I know my Savior. Lives.